morning. So glad you joined with us this morning. And uh, good to have you in the house of God and those online. Thank you for beaming in, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand. Thank you for coming out on this rainy day. Worship the Lord and be together in His presence. Praise God. Lord, we thank you today, Father, for an opportunity to be in your house again. Lord, we lift up praise and honor to your name today, Father. Those listening online, all, all those that are here, Father. Lord, we come to worship the Lord, Father, and we come to sing praises to your name. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your goodness to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let all God's people praise the Lord. Shake off those heavy bands. Lift up those holy hands. Let all God's people praise the Lord. All right, wake up, wake up. Here we go. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let all God's people praise the Lord. Lift up those heavenly hands and shake off those heavy bands. Let all God's people praise the Lord. Let's speed it up a little bit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let all God's people praise the Lord. Shake off those heavy bands. Lift up those holy hands. Let all God's people praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Oh, the blood, crimson love, price of life's demand. Shameful sin was placed on him the hope of every man. Oh, the blood of Jesus washes me. Oh, the blood of Jesus shed for me. Oh, what a sacrifice that saved my life. Yes, the blood, it is my victory. Hallelujah. Oh, save your son, oh, holy one, slain so I can live. Thank you, Father. Oh, see the Lamb, the great I am who takes away my sin. Oh, the blood of Jesus washes me. Oh, the blood of Jesus shed for me. What a sacrifice that saved my life. Yes, the blood, it is my victory. Oh, what love, no greater love. Grace, how can it be that in my sin, yes, see 
veins and he shed his blood for me yes he did oh the blood of Jesus washes me oh the blood of Jesus shed for me thank you father oh what a sacrifice that saved my life yes the blood it is my victory oh the blood oh the blood of Jesus washes me oh yes the blood of Jesus shed for me hallelujah what a sacrifice that saved my life yes the blood it is my victory thank you father that you shed your blood for me for each one of us praise god hallelujah seated above enthroned in the father's love destined to die and poured out for all mankind oh god's only son perfect and spotless one oh he never sinned but suffered as if he did all authority every victory Awesome and power forever. Awesome and great is your name. Oh, you overcame. Hallelujah. Power in hand, speaking the Father's plan. You're sending us out, light in this broken land. All authority, all authority, every victory. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
I love to worship you, Lord. I love to worship you, Lord. Oh, your name is victorious, exalted. Worship him. Hallelujah. I love to worship you, Lord. Oh, I love to worship you, Lord. Oh, your name is victorious. Exalted on high, I love to worship you, Lord. Oh, your name's victorious, exalted. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Stay in the attitude of worship. Hallelujah. No one can touch you like Jesus can. No one can give you peace you cannot understand. No one can bind your wounds with nails. God hands no one can touch you like Jesus can no one can touch you like Jesus can no one can give you peace you cannot understand no one can bind your wounds with nail scarred hands no one can touch you like jesus can no one can touch you like jesus can the pastor's gonna come no one can give you peace you cannot understand no one can bind your wounds with nail scarred hands no one can touch you like jesus can no one can touch you like jesus can no one can peace you cannot understand no one can bind your wounds with nail scarred hands no one can touch you like Jesus can hallelujah thank you father thank you Jesus Amen. The precious name of Jesus, all his love and all that he has done for you and I. We have hope no matter how tumultuous the world may get. We have peace. We have hope. We have assurance. Amen. And if you're not feeling that today, the Lord wants to impart that to you. Amen. We are safe in his able, capable, nail-scarred hands. Amen. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is victorious. And praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's a number of uh, prayer requests. Uh, it's Edova Chilton, a six-month-old. She's been sick for uh, five days. 
need to pray for her. Uh, Sandra, she uh, has migraines and, um, uh, let's see, a headache. Uh, Judy Duff, uh, she had to w uh, work today, but she uh, has an unspoken prayer request. And uh, uh, Chris has asked for a prayer. Uh, Pastor uh, Cliff Wallace, he had his uh, kidney removed. He needs prayer. Uh, Kib Orman and Fred and uh, Jeff Orman, uh, they all need a touch from the Lord. And, and um, appreciate your continued prayers for uh, Stacy and I. And I appreciate those who have uh, filled, filled the, uh, covered the bases for us. And, uh, you know, um, honestly, in uh, thinking of COVID and all the trouble that it has caused, you know, people have lost their lives and businesses and, and just upset so many things. And, and here we're dragging on. And, uh, you know, it makes me mad. <laughs> but I think of the verse, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. And uh, this is a man-made thing uh, done out of evil hearts and, uh, and Satan's involved in it. But praise the Lord, we're looking for victory. <laughs> Amen. Pastor uh, yeah. Kay wanted me to put on the um, list, and I wasn't able to do it. Uh, her sis her sister-in-law's father just found out he has cancer, and we want to pray for his condition of his heart and for the healing of his body. Okay. Amen. We'll pray, pray for that. And of course, we want to pray for Israel in the hostage situation. And, uh, you know, my prayer has been this. We, we read in the Bible that uh, uh, Peter, he was scheduled to be executed the next day. And uh, God sent an angel, woke him up. And those guards had no idea that that angel let him out and opened the gates. And, and I've been praying, Lord... Just send your angel, lead all those hostages out, let them all come filing through back into Israel. <laughs> and Amen. Let's pray for that. Let's pray for that. And uh, the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And let the Lord get all the glory. Amen. That there still is a God in Israel. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let's, let's lift these needs up before the Lord. Oh, God. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you for who you are. Lord, you are so wonderful. You are so precious. Lord, you are love, oh God, and you love all people. And Lord, thank you for the hope that you have given us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that, that Lord, you've, you've come. And Lord, you've given us hope and we can trust you, Lord. We can have peace and we can rest in you, even in a world that is so full of turmoil. Oh God. And Lord, there's no need that is too great for you. There's no need too small, but you welcome all of us, Lord, to come. Lord, you just want us to trust you, God. You want us to believe in your love and your finished work for us. Jesus, you want us to trust in your promises. And God, we, we come to you afresh and anew today. And Lord, we lift up, oh God, the people of Israel, Lord. God, we know that you love all people. We know that, Lord, you've come into the world, Lord, to save all people. But Lord, your word is clear. You, you set aside Abraham, Lord, and his people in a special way. And God, through them, you've brought us your, the Bible. God, through them, you, Lord, you brought us the Savior of the world. You have come. And Lord, you still have a plan and a purpose for them. And, and God, uh, you've told us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Lord, we lift up Israel. We pray that you'll help them during this time. Lord, that you'll give them victory over the enemy. And Lord God, you know that, that God, that this is the evil one. Lord, wanting to snuff out your people because if they can be snuffed out, Lord, your promises and everything all fall like dominoes. But Jesus, you are with them. And we pray, God, that you'll help them. God, it's a horrible situation there, and, and God, but we pray, Lord, for the hostages, God. We pray that you would send your angel, Lord, that you would safely lead them out, Lord, that the guards wouldn't even know what happened, but Lord, the hostages would just be led safely back into the land of Israel. Lord, you can do it, and we pray for that. And God, you know, Lord, how the Palestinian people, Lord, have been manipulated and used as pawns and lied to, and even now, Lord, they're, they're being forced 
at gunpoint to, to stay, Lord, where the war is going to be. And Lord, we pray that you'll have mercy on these people. But Lord God, we ask God that you would uproot, God, this evil God of Hamas and in Iran and, and Lord, all these tentacles, Lord, that you would uproot them and do away with them. Lord, come, we pray, and have mercy, God. Have mercy, God, on the Middle East. And, and Lord, our own country is in turmoil, God. And Lord, but we trust you. We pray for your grace and your help, Lord. We pray for your grace and your help, Father, in Jesus' name. And Lord, there's so many requests here. And Lord, we thank you that you love each and every one. God, we lift up this uh, six-month-old uh, Nova. Lord, we pray, God, that you would touch this child and, and bring healing. Lord, we thank you for Sandra being here today and pray you'll reach down and touch her, Lord. Father, for Christopher, God, that you'll touch him and meet his need. Lord, uh, those who have unspoken requests who couldn't be here, uh, Lord, we pray for Judy and others who might be sick at home. Lord, we pray, God, your healing touch and grace on them. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we lift up uh, Jeff. Lord, thank you that you saw him through that procedure, Jeff Orman, and pray that you would uh, just be with him and prepare him as he's going to need a heart surgery. Lord, we lift up Fred and Kim, and Lord, pray, God, that you'll touch them and meet their physical needs. Father, God, uh, thank you, Lord, that Pastor Cliff Wallace came through this kidney surgery, and pray, oh God, that you would uh, sustain him and, and bless him with a speedy healing. And uh, Lord, my wife and I look to you, God, for a uh, just complete, Lord, uh, victory, God, over this. And, and God, I thank you right now, Lord. I know you're going to do that, and we praise you. And uh, Lord, we lift up uh, Kim's sister's father-in-law. Lord, he's got cancer. Uh, Kim is, uh, or Kay, is not sure, Lord, uh, where he's at with you. And, and God, we pray, Lord, that, that God, all that he has ever heard about Jesus, all the word that he has heard, Holy Spirit, bring it to his remembrance and just draw him with your cords of loving kindness to the throne of grace. And may he put his faith, Father, in Jesus. Touch him and bless him and be with the family during this time, O oh God. And Lord, we also, God, uh, we, we should not fail to, to pray for those in Maine, Lord, who were uh, affected, Lord, by this uh, horrible act of evil. And God, we pray that you'll comfort the families, the community, Lord, that you'll wrap them in your loving arms, bring them closer to you. Jesus, you are the answer for America. Lord, you are the answer. And Lord, uh, you know every need represented here. God, your word tells us even in the laugh, in laughter, the heart may ache. Lord, somebody could be smiling and say, I'm fine, but Lord, inside they're hurting. Lord, reach down and touch each and every one in their heart of hearts. Lord, bless, lift your people up, encourage, comfort, strengthen. And Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Well, you may be seated and Thank you. Praise God. I wanted to go over a few announcements. Um, let's see here. We're not going to have any more pantry until after the uh, food pantry until after the first of the year. And um, this evening is our fifth Sunday fellowship. And that's going to be at 5 o'clock in the Life Center. We want everybody to come. We're also combining that with our pastor appreciation which it should have been all month but we've had several things happen and delay and uh, we want to honor uh, pastor and Stacy and then pastor Keith and Donna this evening so come out for that and uh, again your cards and gift cards and checks and credit cards and all that will be welcome all kinds of gifts for them show your appreciation and all they do praise God um, our fall Christmas bazaar, I finally got it out on the sign, is going to be next Saturday, the 4th, at uh, 10 till 4. And uh, there's several ladies that we are helping with the baked breads and do things. We still need people. There's a sign out in the thing. If you can help in any way, uh, we'd appreciate it. And uh, we have our boiler room prayer meeting every Sunday morning in the conference room downstairs from 9.30 to 10. And it is focused entirely on the service that day and that night and uh, for God to move among his people and, and uh, to show us 
what do you want us to have? We have children's church every Sunday morning for grade school kids. And uh, 10.30, they go downstairs. And we also have a nursery available. And, and we just want to say happy birthday to everybody that had a birthday this month. And, and now we're going to take an offering after all that good stuff. Praise the Lord. I want to pray over the offering. And uh, you can stand and shake a hand or two while you're while you're bringing your offering to the front. Lord, we thank you today, Father, for an opportunity to give back to you. Lord, it's all yours anyway, and we thank you, dear God, for the way that you bless Lighthouse and for the way that you bless us, Lord, and keep us from evil, Lord, that you uh, keep us healthy, Father, and we just want to give back to you, Lord, and thank you for it today. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, 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 what he's done for me. Oh, 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 what he's done for me. Oh, 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 what he's done for me. I never shall forget what he's done for me. Oh, 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 what he's done for me. Oh, 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 oh what he's done for me oh oh, 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 what he's done for me i never shall forget what he's done for me he filled me with the holy ghost that's what he's done for me he filled me with the holy ghost that's what he's done for me he filled me with the holy ghost that's what he's done for me I never shall forget what he's done for me. And oh, 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 what he's done for me. Oh, 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 what he's done for me. Oh, 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 what he's done for me. I never shall forget what he's done for me. Now, folks, that's not... Oh, 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 what he's done for me. No, it's oh, 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 celebration. So I know you know that. Praise God. Well, thank you, Beverly and Brad and Jay, and praise the Lord. You know, yesterday was uh, Brad's birthday. Today is Ron's birthday. Happy birthday, and praise the Lord. Don't you love the family of God, each and every one? Amen. We're brothers and sisters forever. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, uh, a few Sundays ago, I um, actually started a sermon series, Pace Setters, <laughs> if, you remember, if you remember that. And uh, let's see, let me get back here. All right, Pace Setters. And... Uh, a pace setter is one that is out in front, right? When I was in Bible college, uh, President Lednicki, Lednicki used to say, you can't lead from the middle, right? Got to be out front. And uh, sets the pace and uh, 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 some real life examples, you know, uh, George Washington, right? He was a pace setter and father of our country and praise the Lord, we're still blessed because of him. Uh, those of you who are in sports, Michael Jordan, boy, they're still selling his shoes, <laughs> right? And uh, pace setter in, uh, in sports. How about in, the, uh, in Christianity, Billy Graham set the pace. Praise the Lord. What, isn't it so refreshing to have a man of God who is just so public and he ended well? Amen. He ended well. And uh, so it is uh, vitally important who is setting the pace, Right? Uh, we talked about that, uh, 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 oh, it was back, was it was in the 80s, uh, the, the Blue Angels, they, they 
they follow the leader and the, the, the team just keeps their eye on the leader and the leader made a fatal mistake and ran them all into the ground. It was just a horrible thing. And um, we're all familiar with when a, a stampede takes place, right? They're just following the person ahead of them or the cow ahead of them <laughs> right over the cliff. Okay, and so uh, who's setting the pace is very important. And, and the Apostle Paul tells Timothy this, don't let anyone despise your youth, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct or life, in love, in faith, and in purity. And um, the first message that I, I preached, we talked about how God wants us to set the pay, be a pace setter, right in the way we talk and uh you know when we uh when we read in the bible in acts 1 8 that you know the holy spirit would come upon us and we'd be witnesses for the lord i believe it's power to be a witness with our lives right and uh and our lips and so uh you know may may uh may we be uh let's see is it contiguous you know uh through and through uh, that not just a Christian in name, not just a Christian in what we believe, but in how we talk, amen, how we live. And so that was the very first message. But, you know, on Wednesdays, we've been in Hebrews, going through the book of Hebrews, and anybody know where we left off, where we're at the next chapter? I know it's been a long time now, longer than I thought it was going to be, thought we were going to have one week break. And... Okay, chapter 11. And what is chapter 11 known as? The faith chapter. So you know what? I'm, I decided it would only be uh, wise to, uh, to merge the two messages together because God tells us in 1 uh, Timothy chapter 4 to be a pace setter in faith. And so uh, this morning, these, the, the message of uh, Wednesday, Hebrews chapter 11, in 1 Timothy 4.12, being a pace setter in faith, that is going to be our focus uh, today. And you know how fitting it is to talk this morning about faith, amen? We need faith in all that's going on in the Middle East, in Russia, China, the strain on of our, in our economy. Uh, you know, we don't know what caused that man to snap in, in Maine. You know, uh, I've heard horrible, horrible stories of, of people just being so overwhelmed and, and, you know, by the pressures of life and they just mentally, and I believe the devil gets in there. And, um, but, you know, faith is something that is not optional. Even in peaceful times, we need to be a people of faith. Amen? But what is faith? How is faith really beneficial to anyone? Someone may ask, well, isn't it just fanciful pretending uh, to make people feel better? You know, like believing in Santa Claus? Well, this morning I hope to answer those questions that we need faith. Amen? Well, let's pray. God, I thank you for the word that you gave me this morning. And uh, Lord, I pray that, God, that you would give us understanding, that we would hear your voice today, Holy Spirit. Jesus, that you would impart faith into each and every one of our hearts. And, uh, Lord, for you have victory for all of us, even in difficult times. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> now, I tested negative for COVID, okay, days ago. And uh, so for your sake, I'm wearing a mask to make you feel comfortable. I'm, you know, I'm pretty confident I'm not contagious or anything. Uh, Stacy, she wanted to save her energy. And so she's watching online. She'll be here tonight. And, um, and if you want to stay away from us, you know, you won't hurt our feelings. Okay, we love you. And uh, so... We're going to look at Hebrews chapter 11, but before that, we need to look at Hebrews chapter 10, verses 32 to 39, because really this is the segue into the faith chapter. Okay, so um, this is verse 32. Remember the earlier days when after you had been enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with sufferings. 
Sometimes you were publicly exposed to taunts and afflictions, and at other times you were companions of those who were treated that way. For you sympathized with the prisoners and accepted with joy the confiscation of your possessions, because you know that you yourselves have a better and enduring possession. So don't throw away your confidence, which has great reward. For you need endurance, so that after you have done God's will, you may receive what was promised. For yet, in a very little while, the coming one will come and not delay. Jesus is coming. Amen? Praise the Lord. And I believe it's soon. <laughs> not a time to be messing around, <laughs> right? Not a time to to be tiptoeing on the other side of the fence. But my righteous one will live by faith, and if he draws back, I have no pleasure in him. But we are not those who draw back and are destroyed, but those who have faith and are saved. Praise the Lord. Now, um, did you notice the last part of verse 34? It tells us how the believers made it through the hard struggle how they made it through the suffering, the public taunts and afflictions and the confiscation of their belongings, and that with joy. How did they make it through those hard times? Well, because the Bible says, because you know that you yourselves have a better and enduring possession. Because they had faith in what God had for them. They believed that what God had for them was just as real and sure as, you know, even more so than physical things you can touch in this life. It was absolute, rock-solid, definite fact for them that their sins were forgiven, that they were adopted into the family of God, they had eternal life, and what was waiting for them was the city whose foundation and builder is God. Praise, praise the Lord. And so the writer of the book of Hebrews exhorts the Christians not to throw away their confidence, which is synonymous with faith, but to also endure so as to complete God's will for them. You know, the, the, the Christian is going to face difficult situations, not just only because we're in a fallen world, but you and I are targets of the enemy, right? He's a wolf, uh, trying to devour sheep, right? And uh, the enemy seeks to embitter, discourage, and steal the believer's faith in Jesus, but the book of Hebrews was given so that we, we could combat those things. Okay, so now chapter 11 says this, verse 1 and 2, Now faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen. For by it, our ancestors won God's approval. So that, that is, um, so the, the Christian Standard Bible is, says reality and proof, okay? ESV says assurance and conviction, okay? The NASB says faith is the certainty and the proof. The NIV says confidence and assurance. And those of you who are familiar with King James, it's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence. Okay? Faith is I know that I know that I know that I know in my heart of hearts what God has for me, what is reality. Praise the Lord. It's an assurance in the heart of hearts. And so faith, again, I want to keep, I know I bring this up often, it's not a currency to be spent. It's not a power to, yield, uh, to wield. It's a childlike trust in our Heavenly Father who cannot lie, praise the Lord, and who has shown that His love for us in this, that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. We believe, amen, in a God who had not only said he loved us, but showed his love for us. Praise the Lord. And the Bible is really clear that if you and I will just simply believe who he is, what he has said, and what he has done for us, God will do amazing and wonderful things. He just wants us to believe him. 
He wants us to trust him. Now, in Hebrews chapter 11, there's a long list of people, and um, I actually counted 19 different examples in the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 11. Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, Joseph, Moses' parents, Moses, the Israelites, Rahab, Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and then the prophets. Okay, so a lot of examples, and no, I'm not going to go through every one of them, okay? But um, I'm going to highlight a few that I believe the Holy Spirit wanted me to today for us. Okay, the first is in uh, chapter 4, uh, I'm sorry, verse 4, by faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was approved as a righteous man because God approved his gifts. And even though he is dead, he still speaks through his faith. Praise the Lord. You know, after Adam and Eve uh, had sinned, which cut them off from a relationship with God, God gave them the sacrificial system to bring them back into relationship with him. And, uh, and, and we know what that is. It was the, the sacrifice of a lamb. And, um, and someone may say, well, you, when you read the book of uh, Genesis, you really don't hear about God sacrificing a lamb. But what we do read is that God clothed them. And God told, <coughs> told them to come to him through sacrifice. And Abel, he kept the flocks. And, you know, they weren't eating the animals back then. But you know what? They were, they were using them to come to God. And the Bible says that Abel believed what God had to say. Abel believed that God told him, if you want to have a relationship with me, you're going to have to sacrifice a lamb. And it was a picture of Jesus, right? The, the innocent dying for the guilty. The, the, the spiritually naked being clothed with the righteousness of Christ. Okay, that's the picture of the sacrifice, the blood covering the sins. And Abel believed God, and so he followed through on what God said, and he was accepted by God. Cain, on the other hand, disregarded what the Lord had to say and thought he could come to God in his own way. The result was Abel was accepted, Cain was not. Okay, and it was a matter of faith. And it's the same today. God has given us his only son, Jesus, and told us to turn from our sin, put our trust in him, Jesus, who has paid for our sins on the cross and came back to life on the third day to give us eternal life. Those who will believe God and go to Christ will receive forgiveness and eternal life. Isn't that easy? Isn't that so easy? And so, but the person who thinks they can come to God any other way is going to be rejected like Cain. You know, God's not looking at morals. He's not looking at right or wrong. He's looking at, have you, have you obeyed and come to my son so I can forgive and cleanse you? That's what he's looking at. There is none who is righteous. The most, in man's eyes, the most moral, upright person in society, in God's eyes, without Christ, is filthy, putrid rags. Jesus alone, Jesus alone can a person be right in the sight of God. Praise the Lord. Love the songs we we're singing this morning. It's Jesus. Praise the Lord. So verse 7 talks about Noah. By faith, Noah, after he was warned about what was not yet seen and motivated by godly fear, built an ark to deliver his family. By faith, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. You know, we read in the Bible that, that God shared his heart with Noah. He said, I'm, I'm grieved. I'm grieved in my heart over the wickedness. And you know, even today, God is grieved. He is grieved at over what happened in Maine. He is heartbroken at what's going on in the Middle East. He created people to be his children. He created us to love one another. 
and it breaks his heart at the evil and wickedness. And God shared that with Noah. And God, God told him, I am going to destroy every person on this earth, everything that has breath, but I'm going to save you and your family and start over. And you know, back then it never rained. You know, God, no one didn't know how God was going to do it. God said, I'm going to flood the earth. He didn't, but he just believed God. He believed God. And you know, Noah had to persevere. That was a big ark, a big boat he was building. Huge. And uh, many scholars believe because of, you know, you, you read the timeline and how old Noah was and when the flood, that, that he was building it for 100 years. They lasted long back then without vitamins and oil of Olay. <laughs> they lived long. <laughs> But a hundred years of people mocking him, make, you know, jeering, oh yeah, building this boat on dry ground. God's going to flood the world. Ha, ha, ha. Been building this thing for 50 years, 60 years go by. You're still building this stupid boat? You got to be kidding. You're nuts. <laughs> right? People are people. They were making fun of Noah. The Bible says he was a preacher of righteousness. So he was telling them, hey, folks, God's grieved over the evil, the wickedness. This is, this is going to be your only hope. Yeah, right. Ha, ha, ha. The result, Noah saved his family's lives and preserved all the species of birds, animals, and reptiles on the earth. It was the biggest ecological rescue effort in history, wasn't it? If you enjoy going to zoos, thank Noah <laughs> for his faith. He believed God. God said it. He believed it, right? That's the kind of faith God wants us to have. And you know, it's important for each of us also to persevere like Noah did in faith. You know, God didn't tell Noah when it was going to happen, right? He just kept building and building and building and building. You know, maybe 10 years go by and he, he, he could have said to himself, you know, I'm kind of getting tired of this. <laughs> 90 years goes by, boy, I think I'm ready for retirement. <laughs> I'm tired. I want to quit. But no, he persevered. And you know what? Though a great time may pass on what God has told you, and that's why it's good to keep a journal. You know, in, in my phone, I have Google Keep, and, and I have places. I keep, I keep what God has spoken to me. And I go back to that to remind myself. Because how many know? We, can you imagine? Okay, we're only, the Bible says you, you live 70, 80 if you're strong. Praise the Lord, you know, people are living to 100 years today, right? But um, can you imagine living to be 800, 900 years old? Would you have remembered what God told you 700 years ago when you and I can't remember what he told us last week <laughs> or last year, right? Write it down. <laughs> remember and persevere in what God has told you. You know, it might, it might be some time, but God is faithful. He will come through the promises he gave you and, your, and for your family and your life and ministry. God is faithful and you must and I must hang on to what God has told us. Like Noah building the boat, you can't give up because the flood's coming or it's going to come. So be faithful. The next person the Lord wants us to look at is Abraham. <laughs> by faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and set out for a place that, that he was going to receive as an inheritance. He went out even though he did not know where he was going. <laughs> kind of some uh, jokes are coming to mind. You know, <laughs> wife is like, <laughs> should we stop and ask somebody? <laughs> Don't you have a map? <laughs> right? <laughs> His wife being a, a backseat camel driver. <clears throat> you know, Abraham lived during a time where there were many kingdoms and they all had their own laws and the king can do whatever he wanted, right? Abraham wasn't going to have a, uh, a consulate or 
you know, uh, uh, someone that he can call and his country's going to bail him out and come and rescue him. Um, and you know, God didn't tell him where he was going. He just said, I want you to leave your family, your friends, your home, your homeland, and you just start go. You just leave, and I'll show you where you're going to go. But he knew God told him that, and because he trusted God, he stepped out in faith and did that. Because, you know, God gave him some promises. God, God told him that um, I'm going to, through you, bless everybody on the earth. I'm going to make a new nation from you. God, uh, he believed God and he stepped out. And you know, the result was Abraham was greatly blessed by God. We, we, re, we read that materially he became very rich. He was very rich. And God, um, he saw God do, do miracles. And, uh, and the result was through Abraham, God did bring his word, the Bible, right, to the whole world, and he brought Jesus, the Savior of the whole world, through Abraham, because he believed. And you know, it's important that we, like Abraham, believe God is going to fulfill his word for us, even though we don't know how. You know, it's, it's, it's God's business whether he wants to let us in on how he's going to do something or not, right? It's none of our business. God wants us to trust him. He can do all things. And so it's important that we leave the details to God and we just obey. Amen? Because we trust him. We trust him. That's faith. That's faith. So leave the details of the Lord. God is going to do what it takes to bring his promises to pass for your life, for our lives. Even if it takes miracles, God is going to do it. God's going to do it. Praise the Lord. Okay, the next one we want to look at is Moses' parents. The Bible says, By faith, Moses, after he was born, was hidden by his parents for three months because they saw that the child was beautiful and they didn't fear the king's edict. So Moses' parents were living in a very difficult time in history. Okay, they were oppressed and treated as cattle by a racist government. Okay, and that's what was going on. And the command was to keep you in subjection. If a baby boy is born, you're going to kill him. You're going to kill your child. Okay, that, that was the command. Now, Moses' parents, they believed God had something special planned for this beautiful little baby boy. And, and they, didn't, they didn't obey the government. How many know it's okay to not obey the government when the government is in opposition to God? Amen. You follow the word. You, Jesus, you know what? When, you know, I thought about this the other day. Now, you know the Great Commission. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples. You know what Jesus was saying? Jesus was saying, even if you go to a place where they say, don't preach the gospel. Okay, even if the authority, the king, the president in the land says, we don't want you to preach the gospel, as Christians we say, no, the king, the king of all kings who has all authority even over your land has told me to tell others about the greatest news in the world, Jesus. And so king, president, Whatever your name is, whatever your title, we don't care what you have to say because there is an authority we're obeying above you. Amen? So it is okay to break the law of the land to follow the law of heaven. Amen? Praise the Lord. That's why Bibles are smuggled in, right, to places. That's why churches are underground in some places. They're disobeying the laws of the land because there's a higher authority. Praise God. And you want to obey that higher authority because you obey man's authority. You're not going to be, you're not going to be good for eternity, right? We need to obey God's authority. Well, Moses' parents believed that God had something special planned by the newborn son, for the newborn son. And you know what they did? They released him to God by faith in the Nile. That's what they did. They, they're like, Lord, we can't keep him anymore, and we're going to trust you. And you know what? They were really fudging. They were really fudging on the law of the land, weren't they? They were, they were fudging because 
Pharaoh said, throw him into the Nile. We threw him into the Nile. Didn't say it couldn't be in a basket, <laughs> right? <laughs> they were fudging. So did they keep the law of the land? Well, technically, they kept the law of the land. They threw him into the Nile. Pharaoh didn't say, don't put him in a basket and <laughs> float him. So they said, okay, we're going to fudge and we're going to obey the law of the land. I just thought of that. <laughs> we're going to launch him out and... <laughs> We're going to trust him and trust him in the Lord's hands. And you know what the, God, the result was? God not only ensured their son's safety by entrusting their child into the hands of God, but Moses' mom was divinely blessed when Pharaoh's daughter picked up her child and then hired, unbeknownst, <laughs> hired Moses' own mother to raise and nurse her own child. Isn't that awesome what God did for her? So awesome. She got paid to take care of her own son. And her son ended up with the best education the world had to offer at the time. He was wealthy and had a bright future ahead of him. That's what Moses' mom and dad got for their child by trusting the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you know what, parents? You and I can entrust our children into the hands of the Lord. Things might not look really well right now, you know, for, for some of our kids. They might not be where they should be with the Lord. But you know what? You, you and I can entrust our children into the hands of God Almighty. Praise the Lord. You know, our, our, our world seems very unstable, but, you know, you and I would do well to trust God, not give in to fear and doubt, and to believe that he's going to take care of our kids. He's going to take care of our kids through thick and thin. Amen? Praise the Lord. The best hands you can put your children in is God's hands. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, so that was Moses' parents. And you know, how about Moses? The Bible says, by faith, he left Egypt behind, not being afraid of the king's anger, for Moses persevered as one who sees him who is invisible. By faith, he instituted the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch the Israelites. By faith, they crossed the Red Sea as though they were on dry land. When the Egypt Egyptians attempted to do this, they were drowned. Praise God. So you know what? Here, Moses, though raised in a pagan school education system, Moses believed in the God of Abraham. He believed. His faith enabled him to turn his back on all the world had to offer. Folks, he was raised in the king's household. He had the world by the tail, and he turned it all. He, he just rejected it all because he believed. He believed God whom he could not see. His faith enabled him to turn his back on the world and to... And, and, and to answer God's call on his life. Praise the Lord. And, and I'm not going to get into all the details. We know that Moses knew that God had a call on his life. He got ahead of God, right? Killed the Egyptian. And uh, no, God, God had to put him through his schooling now. Forty years on the backside of the desert. Well, the result was Moses was used by God because he, because he believed, because he trusted God. He was used by God to do amazing miracles. He, he delivered his people out of racist bondage. That's what he did. God also used him to organize Israel in, Israel's government and their army and religious system. With the power of God, he led his people to the promised land that God promised to Abraham where they could be free. Praise the Lord. You know, on vacation, um, Stacy and I, we spent the night in, um, in Birmingham, Alabama, and uh, it was on our hearts to, uh, to visit the, the history that took place there. And we went to uh, the, the Civil Rights Museum, and, um, and it's obvious how Martin Luther King Jr. correlated the account of Israel in a racist bondage, right, with his own race, the black people of America, okay, being oppressed and treated as second-class citizens. And, um, you know, we, we highly recommend, if you're in the area, go, go to the, the Civil Rights Museum. And, uh, and I, I do have a few pictures that I didn't, 
I, I learned a lot about the history, and it was just heartbreaking. It just made, made you want to cry how, how the people were treated back then and, uh, and, and what they did. Um, just some pictures. Uh, that's uh, 16th Street Baptist Church, okay? Very, very uh, well-known church in the civil rights mu movement. Uh, meetings were being uh, conducted there on, uh, on you know, uh, what, what they were going to do to get their freedom. And uh, also, okay, this is, a this is a statue in the park, and a lot happened. This is all in the same area, the church, the park, and the museum, because uh, in the park, a lot, a lot of the uh, uh, protests and whatnot were happening. But this is a statue of four of the children who, the K who were killed in 16th Street Baptist Church when a KKK decided to bomb this black church. And, but you know what? God used their blood and, uh, and really changed things around. And so here is the, the girls, um, uh, and they, they were just young. They might look older in the picture, but they were, they were just young, like 10 years old and, and just, you know, around that age. And so, um, let's see, let me leave that. I, you know, I was trying to this morning get a picture of Martin Luther King Jr., and it just wouldn't work. I don't know what was happening. And so, uh, but uh, Martin Luther King Jr., I, you know, I don't know how much uh, you know about him, but, um, you know, he, he, he did a, God used him to do a wonderful thing. And you know what? All, let, and let me give you a little more backstory on this. Um, first of all, you know, the, their, their protests were valid and right, and they were all peaceful, weren't they? They were peaceful. It's not this nonsense we see going around. Oh, you're oppressed, so it gives you the right to, to burn down homes and businesses and kill people? Like, what in the world? No, it was a peaceful protest. And do you know what, how everything gets so twisted? You know, I, I didn't know this. I just learned just the other day that, okay, when Martin Luther King Jr. spoke uh, in, in Washington, D.C., you know, that famous, and, and, he, and he gave the I Have a Dream speech. You know who spoke uh, before him and after him? I believe it was three different Jewish white people, okay, Jewish people, I guess they're olive, Jewish people who spoke because they were very much during that time uh, on the side of the black people and marched with them and helped in legislation and spoke up for them for their freedom. And now things have become so diluted and crazy. You got these black young people who don't know history, who don't know what's going on in, in so-called Palestine, don't realize that these very people that they're saying from the river to the sea, get rid of the Israelites, get rid of the Jews, you goofball. They were helping you during the 60s in your fight for freedom in America. And they don't know history. They don't know. You know, the, the, the people, the young people nowadays are just stupid because they don't know, they don't even know what a boy or a girl is. How much more stupid can you get than that? I'm sorry, folks. We're living in a day and age where people are just so mixed up and deluded. For Pete's sake, the first you know, you 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 know, if you got a if you got a uh, a dog or a cat giving birth, you know what in the world they are when they're coming out. <laughs> Going to scratch our heads. Well, you know, let's wait a few years and then we'll decide what they are, <laughs> folks. That just beyond could you you know we i don't know about you it's like you, can you imagine growing up that our country would have ever been in a state of mind and morality where it's at today you know it just here we go loop de loo here we go <laughs> whoo but let me ask you um has God put a call on your life? What if Moses would have disregarded God's call on his life? What if Martin Luther King Jr. would have disregarded God's call on his life? Trust God, obey, and watch him use you to bring freedom to others. Praise the Lord. 
Freedom to, to, to change metropolis, change the world. God, God has wonderful things, wonderful things. And if, God, if you know God has called you to do something, obey, obey. He will give you the courage. He will work with you. He will bring it to pass. You know, and, and anyway, just obey. No matter how big or small, God is telling you to do something. If God is stirring your heart to do something ministry-wise in this church or start some kind of new outreach to Metropolis, don't disregard that. God is a God of miracles, and if you will trust him and you obey, you will see God use you to do, you know, use your life to do amazing things for his glory. Praise the Lord. Okay, and then we we'll to look at the Israelites. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after being marched around by the Israelites for seven days. Let me go back. So <coughs> this might seem a little, obs uh, a little obscure, but um, because a lot of the, what we read about the Israelites, <laughs> they, were, they were naughty children, weren't they? <laughs> Most of them died in the desert, right? But you know what? The Israelites, they had a hard time trusting God like Moses did. God had so many good plans for them, but their lack of faith in him prevented it to come to pass. What they got instead was a difficult life in the desert because they just would not trust the Lord. But you know what? When they finally did decide to trust the Lord, they saw God do amazing things on their behalf. The walls of Jericho fell down. The leading, leading city in Canaan with walls reaching up to the sky, okay, tall walls, and God just brought them down. And you know what? Um, archaeologically, uh, my, from what I have learned, is that the walls didn't like come down and you got all this rubble the walls went down like an elevator. <whistles> went down. The only wall that stayed up was Rahab's house. Okay, the one her wall, but all the wall <whistles> went down and God did a miracle. So when they finally believed the Lord, the result was they were able to defeat their enemies, stronger and more numerous than they their social status and living conditions greatly improved. They went from the desert <laughs> to beautiful homes and vineyards and fields already just waiting for them. Praise the Lord. They received God's promises. And you know what? God's promises for you in Christ never changes. They never change. I left my Bible on the pew because I have everything, everything in the computer now. But the, the book... The book full of God's promises, they never change. God had all these promises for his people and he was just waiting for them to trust him. And if you and I will trust him for what he has told you and I in his word, we'll see him bring it to pass. Praise the Lord. Maybe your life has been difficult because you keep going back and forth between trusting the Lord, not trusting the Lord, trusting the Lord, not believing the Lord. The Bible says in, in the book of James, don't think you're going to receive anything. It's a double-minded person. Maybe we keep going back and forth because we trust God and then we, we, we're fearful and, of life and, and, and for our kids or whatever it might be, we're fearful. And so we take it back and then we trust the Lord. And then we take it back and God's like, you're tying my hands. I can't do anything for you. I have these promises, and I cannot lie, but you must believe me. You must believe me. But praise the Lord, the Israelites finally did. And God will be able to bless your life and do miracles as he did for the Israelites, if you will believe. If you will believe. Trust him. He wants you to trust him. Praise the Lord. So, um, the Bible says this. And, I, and we're, I want to answer this question. There is a question here. Now, without faith, it is impossible to please God, since the one who draws near to him must believe that he is, exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Okay, so how is that? Well, first of all, God wants us to believe him, and it breaks his heart when we do not trust him. Now, 
God has never done anything wrong to any of us. The devil tries to blame God for a lot of stuff that happens in our lives. And, does, and, and, and he does, I don't want to say he does a good job, he does an effective job. There's many people in the world who are embittered towards the Lord because they believe the lies of the enemy. They, oh, see what God did. This, this has happened to your family, your children. You know, this happened be, because of God. Because of God. And it, no, it's not God. It's not God. And uh, the devil's a liar. And so God wants us to just believe him. And he's never, he's a good God. He's a good God. Walk outside and look at creation. You know, any good thing you have in life, even the food you love, the taste, and <laughs> you enjoy, it's all from the Lord. The relationships you have and, and even your pets, everything is from the Lord. He's got good things in store for us. He's a trustworthy God. But you know what? There's, there's a logical reason for this because if a person doesn't believe God exists, they're never going to talk to Jesus, will they? If they think it's just a figment of people's imagination, God's just a crutch, they're never going to go to him. And so God will never be able to help them. Secondly, they also need to believe that God, going to God is worth their while. So they might believe God exists, but they also need to believe that God is going to care what they have to talk with him about, right? Otherwise, they're not going to come to the Lord. And so this is a very logical verse that we must believe that he exists and he's going to reward us if we come to him, right? And so, praise the Lord. Um, what what did you think of that uh, the testimony that I had that video shown about that Hezbollah terrorist? Wasn't that awesome? If you haven't seen that, I'll, I'll get you the link. I'll send it to you. You need to see that. Wasn't that awesome? Here, a terrorist, and uh, uh, the Lord shows up. Jesus shows up in his room. <laughs> And, uh, but see, God, God did a miracle. God did a miracle. Because, you know what? You and I, honestly, everybody in America, we're spoiled. We got the word of God all over, all over the place. It's all over the place. Most homes have like five Bibles. I forgot what the statistic was. You go anywhere. You get the Bible on your phone, in a hotel room drawer, right? It's, it's all over the place. But here, this man was raised in a country where... There was no Bible. There was no truth. He was raised to hate uh, God's people. And, uh, and Jesus decides to show up in his room. Praise the Lord. Praise God. And he got saved. <clears throat> well, the Lord desires us to trust him. You know, it's an awesome thing uh, what God has done in our lives. Um, the Bible says this, John 1, 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observed his glory. The glory is the uh, one and only son from the father, full of grace and truth. You know, Jesus, Jesus did an amazing thing. God stepped into his creation. He loved us so much that he became a part of his creation and he became a man. Isn't that awesome? You know, I was thinking about that the other day. Um, you know, Jesus knows what it's like to get thirsty. God got thirsty. God had a, had a rumbling in his tummy <laughs> waiting for his mom, uh, earthly mom, to finish dinner, right? Get it ready. He knows what it's like to have tired feet and need to put them up for a while, right? He, he knows what it's like to be in the hot sun and get a sunburn. He, he experienced all those things. He, you know, even knows, knew what it was like to be made fun of and people, you know, be ostracized and ostracized. And, you know, he experienced all these things. And, you know, God on earth did what no other person ever did. He opened the eyes of blind. He raised people from the dead. And he himself, after laying himself down as the Lamb of God, was raised back to life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you know, he's changed our lives. And folks, maybe you're watching online and, and you don't know Jesus. He'll change your life too. Amen.
Praise the Lord. People today are being so hard-pressed, even to the breaking point. I want to ask you, do you need relief today? Do you feel you're going to snap? You know, the world, the news, everything has become just trying to, trying to buy groceries. Everything is so expensive, and you feel so hard-pressed. Well, Jesus is calling you. Jesus is calling you. Do you need relief? Come to Jesus. Do you need hope? Come to Jesus. He is calling you. Do you need peace? Come to Jesus. Amen? Praise the Lord. Worship team, come on up here and um, go ahead and pick one of the songs that you all were singing. And uh, Jesus is the answer. (laughs) He is the answer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to come to Jesus. Is Jesus calling you this morning to come to the altar of prayer? He wants to meet you. You know, if, uh, if you're watching online, I'm going to ask you in a moment to kneel before Jesus. He wants to meet you at the altar of prayer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord God, we just thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you, Lord. We can step out, Lord, and we can look at the trees. We can look at the birds and the animals, and and we can look at the sky, and we can see, oh God, that you're an awesome God, and you created all these things, and all the good things that we have in life are from you. Lord God, thank you, Heavenly Father, that you demonstrated your love towards us in this, that while we were yet sinners, Your only son, Jesus, died for us. God, we thank you, God, that you are a good God. And Lord, we are living in a time of history, especially right now, Lord. Many people are hard-pressed. God, many people are feeling overwhelmed. They're feeling desperate and hopeless. But Lord God, you have hope. You have relief. Jesus, thank you, God that if people will put their trust in you, as your word says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be delivered, will be saved. Whoever trusts in you will not be disappointed, not be put to shame. God, those are promises. Jesus, you said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Lord, those are promises. Those are invitations. And Lord, I pray, oh God, that as people put their faith and trust in you, you will do that for them today. You know, like Abel, I want to encourage you, go God's way. Jesus is the only way. And if you will go like Abel and trust God, God will give you, Jesus will give you cleansing from sin and eternal life. Like Noah, I challenge you, determine to persevere in your trust in God's word for you. Maybe God has given you a word yesterday. Maybe it was last year. Maybe it was 10 years ago. Hang on to that word and persevere, and you will see God come through for you. And this morning, if you need strength to persevere, I'm going to invite you to come and say, Lord, I need strength. I need grace. I'm, I'm, I'm wavering. I'm wavering in my trust and hope that you're going to come through. Well, God wants to renew that because he is faithful and he will come through on the word that he has given to you. Or like Abraham, don't feel you need to know all the details. God wants you to trust him with the details. He wants you to just step out Take his loving hand and allow him to lead you. And he will guide you. He loves you and has good plans for you. Like, excuse me, Moses' parents believe God has good plans for your children, however old they are right now. Entrust their future into Jesus' hands. Praise the Lord. He is faithful. He will will fulfill his promises for them. Trust him, parents. Like Moses If God has asked you to step out, maybe it might be full-time vocational ministry, or it might be starting a new ministry in Metropolis, in this church. If God has called you to do something like Moses, step out in faith. 
You know, he might even call you to the mundane and ordinary and just offer yourself to the Lord to, for him to use you to touch your neighbors, to touch your co-workers, to touch those around you. And you will see him use you to bless and set free the people around you. Like the Israelites, maybe you have failed to believe God. Maybe you can say, I'm in the desert. I trust the Lord, and then I don't. I trust the Lord, and then I, and I, and then I walk in fear and worry and doubt. Well, the, <coughs> the Lord is calling you to repent. And you know what? Faith comes from Him. If you will just humble yourself and say, Lord, Lord, I want to be like the Israelites going into the promised land and going around Jericho because we trust you. Lord, give me faith today. Get, deliver me from this worry, fear, and doubt and fill my heart with faith and Jesus will do it for you. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand. As the worship team sings, what do you need from Jesus today. What do you need from Jesus today? God wants you to trust him. In what ways do you need to trust him? In what ways do you need to step out in faith? In what ways do you need to rest in him? God loves you and he wants to encourage you. He wants to give you perseverance. He wants to fill your heart with faith. He wants, to, he wants you to trust him so that he can do for you and your family all that he desires to do. God is still the miraculous God. Praise the Lord. He's doing amazing things. Amen. So as the worship team sings, come and find a place of prayer. If you're online, just kneel before your couch or bed or whatever you need to do and just come to Jesus and talk with him about your faith and what he's calling you to do and to trust him in. Amen. No one can trust you like Jesus can. No one can give you peace you cannot understand. Thank you, Lord. No one can bind your wounds with nails, God has. No one can touch you like Jesus can. No one can touch you like Come and allow Jesus, Jesus to touch you. Can. He loves you. He's a personal God. Let him touch you. peace for you. He has grace. He has hope and strength. He has faith. He has eternal life and forgiveness. Come to Jesus. God is waiting for you. He is waiting for you. He's wanting to do the miraculous in your life, but he's waiting on you. Precious
praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would seal this word in our hearts. God, we don't know what's going to be on the news tomorrow. God, we don't know what's going to happen in this world. But God, you have given us a book, Lord, full of your promises. God, to encourage, Lord, to give hope. Lord, to you told us, Lord, in this world, we're going to have trouble, but to take heart because you've overcome the world. Jesus, you, you came to this world, Lord, you created. And Lord, you've given us hope. And Lord, we can trust you in this life. God, I thank you for that. Lord, I pray blessing on my brothers and sisters. Lord, those watching from home, God, wherever they might be, I pray blessing. God, give us grace to have that childlike faith to just trust you. Lord, we don't need to know the details. God, even if things are, are, are taking a while, like with uh, Noah building the boat, God, you're going to bring it to pass. And we thank you that you are trustworthy. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. We love you. you. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for coming this morning. And uh, we'll be, what, what time are we meeting tonight? Okay, five o'clock. Five o'clock. Five o'clock <laughs> at the uh, Christian Life Center. Well, God bless you, and uh, you have a wonderful afternoon.